going to belabor this. No, but, belabor Brad, this, but when you look at this, just get to the other specific. presidents, when they leave, they take the papers. They have thousands and thousands. Obama had it. Nixon had it. Carter had Their it. The Bushes is that had these it. These are super sensitive national security oh, documents. I'm sure, I'm sure, All right, so here's, I'm sure you'll see is, real super sensitive that Biden has, because Biden is, has far more than anybody's ever kept. And he turned them over when asked. No, he but, didn't. But he that's, still that's hasn't he given the 1,850 boxes that stored at the University of Delaware. In fact, they're fighting them in court, right. and they're fighting them. And but he the opened boxes, up for them to look at it. Excuse me. The boxes from Chinatown, he didn't turn them over. He sent them up to his lawyer in Boston to look at before they handed them over. And their special counsel is looking at that, and we'll see what comes well, out of uh, it. But I do want to just you can imagine. This. I don't want to dwell on it. Brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com. Make sure you get the link in the description section. Get you some of our brand new merch. We have a brand new shirt that's out that's freaking hilarious. And it says, my pronouns is, are, are USA. It's my favorite shirt that we've made so far. So go on, get it. The discount code should pop up somewhere uh, down here. So get the discount code of TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com. Get the link in the description section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get a notification. Anytime I go live, make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Comment over the shirt as well. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, I'm in Israel right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm making my videos from here. I'll be in a different hotel tonight and multiple different hotels while I'm here in Israel. Right now, I'm in Jerusalem. Uh, I just always like to say that because people are like, where you at, Brandon? Why are you right now in your regular studio? I'm in Jerusalem uh, having an incredible time. Let's talk about Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump, I don't think, won himself any favors by being interviewed by Brett Baer. I, it, it, it does not benefit Donald Trump whatsoever. I watched it. I love Donald Trump. I'm a Trump supporter. Um, I really do think that he would make an incredible president policy wise for sure if he's elected in 2024. You know, I definitely think there are some nefarious things that happened in 2020. I think Stevie Wonder can see uh, that much. However, I think that Donald Trump is digging himself in a hole he's not going to be able to get out of. Just objectively speaking, and I know people are going to be mad at me, but I don't make these videos just to tickle your fancy. I make these videos to give you information and inform you of at least my opinion on these things based on my experience. And I think that that interview was a nightmare for Donald Trump. I, I really do believe it was. You know, when Brett Baer, and I'm going to play the clips for you because I'm, I'm going to play what I'm referencing. But when Brett Baer was explaining to him, when Trump made mention that, hey, you know, I picked the best of the best, and he's explaining to him, this person don't support you. This person don't support you. This person don't support you. You said this about this and this and this. And I have to say, I'm not the one to say everybody else is the problem and Trump is not the problem. Like, I think that there is an issue. Even if you're right, if, if, if everybody that was in prominent positions in your White House are turning against you, running against you, no longer supporting you, it, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. That's not to say these people aren't cowards. That's not to say that these people are illegitimate or, or that's not to say that they're not illegitimate or that they are, are worthless pieces of crap. That's not to say that. But that's to also say that you didn't pick the right people. And somehow you are finding yourself in conflict with all of these people that used to work for you, even Kaylee McEnany, even him supporting Ron DeSantis at some point, And now he's the enemy of Ron DeSantis, Rex Tillerson, all these other people who could be a fart in the wind uh, in, in the political perspective. But these are still people that you hire. Dr. Fauci is another crook that was in the Trump administration and should have been fired. So. I think that going down this path of discussion is not good. Let me play the clip. In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. This and we time, had tremendous look. We had the best economy we've ever had. The this world time has ever seen. Your Vice President Mike Pence is running against you. Yeah. Your Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr. Uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr a, a gutless pig. Uh, you're 
second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock. And your first Defense Secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House Press Secretary, Kayla Kennedy, milk toast. And multiple times, you've referred to your Transportation Secretary, Elaine Chao, as Mitch McConnell's China-loving wife. So, why did you hire all of them in the first place? Because I hired 10 to 1 that were fantastic. We had a great economy. We had phenomenal people in charge of the economy. We had phenomenal people in the military. I'm not a fan of Millie, and I'm not a fan of certain of the television people. But I knocked out ISIS. I defeated ISIS. They said, Mattis, it would take three years, and I don't think we can do it. I did it in a period of, like, four weeks. There's a lot of people who praise you for your policies. I just said true. that. That's true. Well, I mean, you just went through a list. But don't forget, for everyone you say, I had 10 that love us. All right, another thing that I, I saw that was interesting that, that bothered me a little bit is Trump speaking on an issue that's a matter of litigation. I, don't, I do not think it helped him whatsoever uh, speaking about the, the uh, classified document thing. The argument that I think that conservatives are missing here, and, and, and we will see in the court proceeding if it's legitimate or not, I lean towards believing it's not legitimate, but the argument isn't whether Donald Trump had the right to declassify or classify. The argument is that there are certain things that the government had deemed that he hadn't declassified and they should not be in the possession of a president and requested that he take, he give them back subpoenaed to give them back and he refused. Therefore they did X. Now that's the debate. That's the leverage that the, that the attorney general, and that's the perspective that they're coming from. And I would say this, it did not help him speaking about it because now he's saying things that's admissible in the court of law. For years where it was very seriously classified. I have every right to have those boxes. This is purely a Presidential Records Act. This is not a criminal thing. In fact, the New York Times of all had a story just the other day that the only way NARA could ever get this stuff, this back, would be please, 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 could we have it back? And they please. asked for that. Because they have no, we they were did talking. They did ask for it. No, and All right. there's a decision strongly that you can keep. But I wouldn't have kept, but they raided my house. They came in and raided. We were discussing, having very good discussions with NARA, a radical left group, by the way. And all of a sudden, my house got raided. Do you know if you still have any highly sensitive government documents? No, I, I don't have anything, no. Okay. They, but what I'm concerned about, they took everything, right? I don't know what they took. They could be stuffing it. I don't know what they put in there. And we wanted to be there when they were taking. They wouldn't let anybody in the room. They've never treated a president like this. I think that if they have an argument, if they're making an argument, he just bolstered their argument. He admitted that he had the documents and testimony in the, in, in the um, you know, when you look at the affidavit, he's he's admitting to people in a recorded phone call that he knows that they're not declassified and that he could have, but he can't now. So he's acknowledging that he's in possession of stuff that he probably shouldn't be in possession of. Now, if he want to argue that they should go down this path of the presidential act and the declassification um, scenario, then that's another story. I, I honestly think Donald Trump could have probably avoided all of these things and not even got caught up in this. But I don't think the interview helped him whatsoever, to be honest. It did not help Donald Trump whatsoever. I think it hurt him in, the, in, in legally, and then it hurt him politically because if people are on the fence and they seeing Brett Baer just, you know, destroy him in, in certain areas. I just think it's sad to see, you know, I think that Donald Trump shouldn't be speaking on legal issues. He should not be speaking on legal issues. And after listening to the interview in part, I see probably why his attorneys resigned. Because <laughs> he did not listen to them. And in documents, they're, they're showing him having a conversation, telling one person that he's complying and telling his lawyers, I mean, telling one person that he's not complying, telling his lawyers that he's in compliance, and now he's been indicted, and they read the indictment, and they say, well, you told us that you were in, you were compliant. 
We can't, we can't continue with this. Please, please, could we have it back? And they please, asked for that. Because they have no, we they were did talking. They No, and they said, I gave can you give the some, documents back? And we were talking. And then they said, they went to DOJ to subpoena you to get them Which back. they've never done before. Right. And in but all why fairness, not just hand them over then? Because I had boxes. I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to Nara yet. And I was very busy, as you've sort of seen. Yeah, but I've according very, to the indictment, busy. you then tell this aide to move to other locations after telling your lawyers to say you'd fully complied with the subpoena when you hadn't. But before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things, uh, golf shirts, clothing, pants, shoes. There were many things. Oh, I would say much, plan? much more, not that I know of, but not that I know of, but everything was declassified. And Biden didn't have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Nor did Mike Pence, by the way, have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Right. And another person that came out that was an attorney of Donald Trump said that he had told Donald Trump to return the stuff and let's negotiate with uh, Merrick Garland and, and them to, to return some of the documents so that it don't get to this point. And he said Donald Trump refused to listen to him and decided to listen to somebody else who's less credible. So I know this is not a video that everybody want to watch. Uh, I'll play the clips that that are associated with the things that I'm saying. I'll have my guy edit it in here. Um, but this is just, I, I hate when Donald Trump do stuff like this because it's really hurting him in the long run. There are people who are MAGA, MAGA, MAGA that will support Donald Trump off of a cliff. And I would argue that it's I pretty much will support him to the end of the cliff. Once he jump off, I ain't jumping with him. But I'll support him to the end of the cliff. But there's people that will support him jumping off the cliff. And I think at some point we're going to have to make a determination as to can he win in the general. He'll win the primary from prison. He'll he'll win the primary post-mortem. But can he win in the general? And that's something that we need to acknowledge. Did Don, is Donald Trump going to be, go to jail over this stuff? We all know that Hillary Clinton did her dirt. We all know that Joe Biden did his dirt. We all know that Hunter Biden just uh, uh, decided to negotiate a plea deal. So we know people are committing crimes. It's just the matter that I care about is, is Donald Trump going to get convicted of these crimes? And is he going to go to prison? And that's going to be a big story. And, and I want to be honest about the whole thing. I don't want to sit here and lie to you guys, and I don't want to sit here and deceive you. I don't want to sell you a nightmare and be telling you that, oh, no, no, this is great for Donald Trump. He's, he's, he's looking good. This is a witch hunt. And I'm looking at the facts and circumstances surrounding the law and pertaining to the evidence at hand and saying, uh-oh, this could be problematic. And they could still be biased, although he may have broke the law. And I'll say this to say, and then I'm going to move on is that there's a possibility that he broke the law and all of the things that they're charging him with. But normally they don't indict a president for that. They let it go. It's a two-tier system. If Bush did it, if Obama did it, they'll just let it go. But with Donald Trump, they're not letting it go. They're going to enforce the law that he that he potentially broke. But we shall see. Um, but I, I think that some of these videos in this interview was just not kosher in my opinion, and I, I don't think it did him any favors whatsoever. And there's some people saying it did. I, I, we'll see. I don't think it did him any favors. I think he should have avoided this interview unless he had concrete rebuttals and not just talking in circles and, 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 and just being boisterous about certain things that doesn't sound reasonable, in my opinion. But I love Donald Trump, and I hope that he can overcome this. I hope that he doesn't get indicted, doesn't get, uh, isn't found guilty, let me say it like that. And I will vote for him, point, point and simple. There's no other candidate I think has the gall to do what he can do. But there are concerns that I have. You know, he, he, he don't have a good history of picking the right people. And it's, it's kind of difficult to, to think that he could pick the right people and that people will work with him anyway, even if he was there. So that's the difficult portion of it. So we, we shall see as things move forward. God bless you. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all show some love from Israel. I'm out.